Hi, this is Jean, and today we're going to talk about a fun little project that you can make for yourself, or you might want to give it for a gift, or a lot of people sell these things, <laughs> pot holders. And I'm just going to give you some kind of basic instructions and a couple ideas for what you can do to create some interest on the top of your pot holder. Um, this particular one, I had all these scraps left over from a project and they're an inch or an inch and a half wide. And normally I might just toss those and I thought, oh, they look really cute sewed together. So here you go. Um, and I was also uh, making a table runner and it called for lots of four and a half inch squares and I cut more than I needed. So now I just thought, well, I'll put these together. That's a four patch. Or you might want to make a, a little Christmas pot holder. And I would guess that you probably have some lonesome blocks that didn't make it into one of your projects. And this is a perfect place for them. So first of all, let's talk about materials. And um, this material, I think you've probably seen before, is called Thinsulate. It's got a coating, it's a, a, a lightweight cotton fabric with a coating. And when you put this on the back of your pot holder, it isn't gonna burn at all. So that's something you can use. But I also just learned about Insulbright, and this goes in between the layers. And see how it's kind of, you can see a little um, uh, glitter there? <laughs> That's actually um, part of the materials. It's an insulated product. And I uh, have put it in each of these pot holders I made, and I love stitching through it. It's kind of like a thin batting. But I also use uh, thin batting with it. So I'm going to show you that process right now. And I, um, there are a couple ways to finish pot holders. I thought I would take the simplest way first, which is a pillowcase turn. And here you can see my um, insel bright. And I've stitched around the shape and I've left an opening and I always need about three or four inches. And I back tack when I get to that so that I don't start pulling stitches out when I turn it. And you want to clip off your corners. And I did that. So now I'm ready to turn it. And I'm kind of heading toward the corners because I like to take and go in. Um, it's harder to do it with your fingers. So I really like my um, turning tool that you get in a uh, bag of stuffing. And since I use a lot of stuffing, I have a whole bunch of them. But I can take them to class if I need to. So I'm going to turn this over so I can get that one. Okay, now at this point, you know, I've, I'm gonna go to the ironing board, but first of all, I want you to look at my little design I did. Um, I love this fabric with the, the words on it for Christmas. And so I put a one little border, just use the log cabin sort of technique. I cut one and a half inch wide strips and I sewed one here, 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 and here, so now I have a border around the whole thing. And then I cut the dark green two and a half inches, did the same thing. So at this point, I'm gonna go to the iron and um, press this under. I don't know if it's warm or not. Well, hope it is. So do you just have 
this in it? The... Yes, I only put the Thinsulate in this one. So you didn't use the first stuff you showed, no. the gray stuff? No, you can, well, it would go on the back. But it's it doesn't have to. No. Okay. Um, but a lot of people like this kind of material for their pot holders because then uh, you don't have that chance of scorching. Okay. So as opposed to the green on the back, you would have layered that yes, on the back. Yes, I would have put this on the very back if okay. I wanted to know And for still sure. put this inside? Yeah, I would. Okay. Because this really insulates when you go to um, pick up something hot. I just don't care for pot holders with this personally on the back so I don't use it that very much. So I pressed under the lining edge so now we'll press under the other edge. Okay and I'll pin this in place and um, you know, I could machine stitch this, but I like to hand stitch these, but I'm not going to take the time to do it right now. Yeah. So I probably would put one more line, once I press this, one more line of quilting right here, just top stitch around like that. And that's what I did on, um, oh, I haven't done it yet. <laughs> on this little pot holder, I did this stitching before I had the back on. And all I did was follow the shape. So you get this kind of funky echoing. Well, now that I have done that and I turned it and I hand stitched it shut, I'm gonna do another row of stitching that comes up like this and that will attach it really good to the back. Now, another type of quilting that you can do um, on these pot holders is um, a stitch on my sewing machine that is, I just call it the serpentine stitch, but this is what it looks like in your book, this little picture. But this is, um, a type of stitching. I hope Val can get up here. You can see it pretty good right here, Val. Um, I like to put it over um, a seam line. And when I'm making utility quilts, like for, that's gonna get a lot of use and go through the washer and dryer a lot, I used to use this type of machine quilting and just, it worked out really well. Now, um, let's go to doing binding. And what I do is one and a half inches for my binding. And I go to the iron and press back one edge. So it's gonna look like, like this. And here's my edge that's pressed back right there. And I do the two sides first and then the top and the bottom. And I start on the wrong side. So I am going to, and I have to leave tabs out here because when I turn it and top stitch, this will get tucked in. But this is the folded edge and it's going to come around to the front. So I lay this on and I'm just going to pin it in place because I have the other end already sewn. And then I can just show you that step without sewing this again. So now here we are, pretend like I've sewn that edge. And uh, what I've done is to press this good, I'm gonna fold this edge in, like fold it so it's straight. And then I have to turn and do it this way. <laughs> And I bring this over the top and make sure this is tucked in. And I put a pin in there. And because you've already pressed that under a quarter inch, it just 
um, turns right over. I mean, it's really easy to do. I always make sure that raw edge is tucked in and a little bit of it was peeking out there. There you go. So I'm going to go to my sewing machine and top stitch. And I like to put my needle in first. Pull my pin out. Take a couple stitches and back tack. So I did three. And I am stitching right next to the edge. This is something I don't try and sew really fast when I'm doing this. And you're going to back tack again. So if you want a binding, I think this is a really great way to do it. And the binding also acts as a frame. Um, you know, this little one doesn't have a frame at all, obviously. Um, that would be the simplest to do. Um, this one looks like it has a frame because I did the log cabin method. So you could do that method and just finish it like the pillow turn. But then if you really want to have binding, this works well. And some people like to have a little hook, you know, so that they can hang their pot holders. You would then need to slip it in the seam, either on the corner or in the middle. And what you use is your leftover, like I cut a piece of um, a strip that was the width of my fabric, which is 42 inches. And so I had it, I'll still have this left over, but I had enough to make this. And I turned both um, edges under, fold it in half and top stitched it to make this little piece. And I thought this one looked kind of neat putting it in the middle, but I certainly could put it on the end. So I hope that gives you some ideas for what you might do um, with pot holders. Um, I'm certain that you have materials that you could use for these pot holders and that some of your lonesome blocks may just find a home and get to go to somebody's house for Christmas. Thank you.